work to do and it's supposed to. But yes, pleasure to be here. Um, I hope everyone had their hole this morning. Uh, I realize that that has a different connotation in Scotland, which is why I like to keep asking it. Um, it's amazing what you can get away with when people think you're just a dumb American. Um, I'm actually just a, a Canadian that enjoys double entendres. Um, in fact, if I didn't have a bagel shop, I'd probably have a polo mint shop, just so I can keep asking the exact same question. <laughs> get your hole? That was your hole. Um, family. So, um, Firstly, uh, I just want to apologize for the title of this talk, uh, The Whole Flow. Uh, it's been brought to my attention that uh, The Whole Flow sounds like I'm here to talk about my pelvic floor. <laughs> Hand out some information on that. Uh, you'll be happy to know it is not about that. Um, the Whole Flow actually sounds, um, it's, it's a reference to work and life balance. So. Uh, pelvic floor not seeming so bad now, right? Um, because that, that, that phrase, work and life balance, it's, um, it's sort of feared and despised, you know? Like the phrase, um, let's take this opportunity to do some blue sky thinking. Or um, let's have a meaningful Brexit vote. Or Aberdeen Pleasure Beach. <laughs> uh, I should introduce myself. My name is Lara Bross. Uh, Mama Bross, I'm also known as that. Uh, I'm also known as the Bagel Lady. There's the Bagel Lady. Hi, it's me. <laughs> um, I'm from Montreal, as Alex said, uh, the bagel capital of the world, uh, often confused with New York, who like to pretend they're the bagel capital of the world. It's a big mistake. Um, see, New York like to shout about it. They're like, hey, we've got the best bagels. And Montreal, we're just like, no, we do, but we don't want to tell anyone so we can have more bagels. Um, in Montreal, there's a bagel shop on every corner, 24-hour bagel shops, but you still go to the other side of the city to get your favorite bagels. Um, and uh, just like how here, like you sort of stop on your way home from a night out to get like your deep fried kebab. Um, uh, there you would stop to get your, your bagel. So if you wake up next to a half-eaten bagel on your pillow, you know you've had a good night. Um, I went to theater school in Montreal. Uh, I graduated from theater school and I got a job working for Disney. Um, I worked on cruise ships for four years, and that's where I met my Scottish man. Um, it was kind of like a Miss Piggy, Kermit the Frog situation, but I got him in the end. Um, and then I moved to New York to pursue uh, my life as an actor, um, and I became an amazing bartender. <laughs> um, and then I fell into this crazy career of cocaine, I mean comedy. Um, my, uh, my time in New York, though, I really fell in love with the people there, the buzz, the food, the delis. I used to take the white fish salad from Essa Bagel on 51st and 3rd um, before I drove home for the weekend. It takes seven hours to drive to Montreal. And I would put that white fish salad in a Montreal bagel when I got there from St. Peter, and I would take a bite of it. And I remember it being like the best thing ever. And I didn't know it at the time, but that was the first Ross Bagels creation. Um, but yeah, bit like New York, I could have stayed there, you know, I loved it, but for someone like me who doesn't need to sleep, it would have been the death of me. Uh, but cue Kermit to save moi from, um, from the big bad apple. And I'm like, what am I going to do in Scotland? Because I become like 65 and very Jewish, more Jewish than I am right now. What am I going to do there? Uh, but actually, it was 2006, and there was a heat wave, and it was the Fringe Festival. And I was like, this city is amazing. <laughs> but it was missing two things. It's very obvious that it was missing air conditioning and bagels. And uh, for the last 13 years that I've lived here, I've never needed air conditioning again. <laughs> but bagels became a different story. Um, my first three jobs in uh, Scotland play a very important part of the whole flow story, so pay attention because there'll be a quiz at the end. <laughs> My first job was Gilded Balloon. Um, I got a job working at the box office there, and they quickly learned that I was way too loud to be wasted behind the desk, so they sent me out flyering. And um, this is when Tim Minchin and Russell Howard were just starting out, um, and they were like, who has been flyering for our shows? We are selling out. Well, it's because of me. So, to let you guys know, I made them. Okay. Um, but I got a real taste for you know the comedy scene and how to sell a show, and I started thinking, you know, this is something that I I should be doing. So I started ha ha hounding Karen Corin, um, you know, for to do my own woman woman show the following year. 
sending her auditions uh, by email, letters, posters. I, I went to her house, and before you even <laughs> ask, it's, uh, the, those charges were dropped, so <laughs> that's not the reason why she didn't give me my one-woman show uh, in the first place. But, you know, imagine had she given me the show, Edinburgh would have never gotten their bagels, and we would have never partnered with them um, last fringe to be you know their main food vendors for the largest arts festival in the world so full circle uh, tom kitchen my second job in edinburgh and another vital element to the flow uh, i came to the kitchen before they had their star um, and it was through an agency and on the first day they asked me if i wanted a, a staff meal and i told and they told me you know go into the kitchen um, to get your staff meal so i walked in and Chef was like, Tom Kitchen, nice to meet you. And I'm like, Lara Bross, how's it going? <laughs> and I'm like, where's the food? And he's like, who the hell is this? Um, so I got shown the, the staff meal and it was uh, rabbit's feet and like lamb's testicles. And I was like, is, sorry, is there anything like vegetarian? And he's like, sorry, if you want to work here, you need to eat meat. And I'm like, no, I'm vegetarian. And he's like, yeah, no, you're not. He's like, try this. I'm like, what is it? He's like, bone marrow. I'm like, Oh my God, this is so good. He's like, yeah. So this was, um, uh, that's where I learned everything. I mean, I, not everything, but hospitality and the industry and suppliers and how to burn hairs off of pig, pig's ears. And um, this is where I got my full on foodie training. Um, and then they started having kids and I became their nanny. And chef used to make me take pictures of their lunch before I served it to them. Um, <laughs> which is kind of like what I do now with bagels, so it's fine, you know, just preparing all that thing. And so again, full circle. And when I decided that I wanted to open up a bagel shop, he was super supportive, and he helped me with all the suppliers, and he did some taste testing, um, and he told me that I would never be like him. Um, but you never know, because we might be the world's first Michelin star bagel shop. We could get there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my third job was the Stand Comedy Club. Um, and it's just, you know, this wee hidden gem downstairs, York Place in the cellar. And I remember I just walking in there and I met some of the most miserable people I've ever met in my life there. Um, but, you know, I love them. And I was obviously very, way too enthusiastic for their liking. So it took me a few years for them to warm up to me. Um, but uh, I started a sketch group there and then I started doing some stand up. Um, and that really taught me who I really am the only Jew in Scotland. <laughs> Until I opened up a bagel shop, of course, and now there's loads of us. Uh, I'm now the poster girl for all the Jews in Edinburgh. Hashtag Jew it up, it's great. Um, but no one ever laughed at my Jew jokes when I was doing stand up. Uh, but you know that I've got a bagel shop, it's okay now. Um, but <laughs> but it, was, uh, it was comedy that created Mama Bross's persona, you know, uh, because Ruby Wax was already taken. Um, so I had to come, you know, I had to come up with another one. And people used to always say, do you know who you remind me of? Ruby Wax. <laughs> but yeah, I know, I get all the time. Um, but again, full circle, full circle. So everything happens for a reason. Um, and this is, you know, these, these three first jobs were very important to this, as I said, flow. Um, I recently opened up a time capsule for myself that I kept in the garage in Montreal. Um, it was to be opened in 2017, the future. Um, and it was a letter from myself, written to myself. Uh, when I, I wrote, wrote it when I was 10, and it was to be opened when I was 40. And it's like, hey, Lara, uh, I know you're probably reading this backstage on Broadway. Um, but you know, I always wanted to be an actor. And I, I did some work. You know, I did some films and plays, and I was doing some sketch comedy off Broadway in New York. But then. I, I had to adapt, you know, I had to write my own work, join an improv group, teach drama, entertain on cruise ships, start a sketch comedy troupe, do stand up, go back to uni and film and television, learn production, be a runner, make documentaries, apply for a PhD. I mean, if something wasn't working for me, I'd move on to the next thing. And that was to keep myself challenged, um, inspired, and to keep my creative energy flowing. Thank you, one person. <laughs> in 2017, when I got turned down from a fully funded PhD that I had been asked to apply for, I was shocked. Um, I put everything I had into this application and I was massively rejected. And for the first time, I think, ever, 
I was stumped. And honestly, I felt like I had nothing to direct my creative energy into. I had nothing left to be enthusiastic about. Um, nowhere left to steer my enthusiasm. Um, six weeks later, we opened up Ross Bagels. It was just an idea. It was something, you know, I thought that would keep me busy from nine to three, something to help Mark pay the mortgage. Um, you know, I was going to be able to, you know, justify still doing some comedy uh, that would not pay the bills, uh, make a few coffees, fill a few holes. Um, you know, and th th I, we had no idea that the first day we opened up the doors, there'd be a queue down the block and that it would turn into what it is today. Um, when people first started calling me the bagel lady, I wasn't sure how to take it, you know. Um, I remember being at the gym and I was sort of like halfway out of my gym clothes trying to get changed and I felt this sort of presence sort of walk behind me, take a double look and then walk back again and then sort of come around to the front of me and she went, you're the bagel lady. <laughs> like, yeah, hey, it's going. And she's like, hi, nice bagels by the way. <laughs> Um, but it's, you know, it's not something I ever wanted to be recognized for and nothing to do with me being the performer that I always dreamed of being, but something clicked and my inner drive sort of kicked in and I did what I always do and I gave it everything I got and just like that, it became everything I ever wanted. I'm constantly challenged. I'm always being creative. I'm performing more than I ever have. Uh, and surprisingly, I'm being recognized for it like in the street, um, and it's amazing, I love it. You know, I can't believe what's happened in just over two years. It's exciting every single day, uh, being nominated for foodie awards, articles in in-flight magazines, radio interviews, documentaries, a raving review from Grace Dent who said, and I quote, I came to Edinburgh to review Michelin star restaurants and all I can remember two weeks later is the bagel I ate on Leaf Walk. <laughs> if I had a mic, I'd drop it, but it seems a bit silly. <laughs> um, um, so, um, I've, we, no, we've done uh, work, sorry, going back to all my accolades here. Um, <laughs> We, uh, we have done, you know, just two days ago, I don't know if someone saw Lonely Planet, recognized us as uh, being one of the top 10 places to eat in, in Edinburgh. Um, you know, if you guys think about it, we're pretty much, we're expanding quicker than Greta Thunberg's school absence report. So. <laughs> um, collabs we've done with Ben & Jerry's, Gilded Balloon, Brook & Brewery, Observer Food Monthly Awards, Scottish Woman Awards, Scottish Comedy Awards, take that, Karen Corrin. GQ magazine, The Guardian, I was on Late and Live, Late and Live, guys, uh, featured on BBC's Hidden Gems, our adverts are going viral. Um, meanwhile, I've got two kids, a loving man with a great accent, uh, a dog, a house, a mortgage, birthday parties, laundry, school runs, doctor's appointments, friends, two knots in my shoulders that never, ever, ever go away, no matter how much someone presses them down, they're always there. But I have to keep the flow and so everyone tells me to breathe I don't know how because it's just it's impossible have a nap do some yoga stretch it out I don't I can't like I just have to keep going it's just that's the way that I work at this point I'd like to introduce my flow chart <laughs> I'm the core the black empty hole my flow is all around me each color represents a different aspect of my life love Traveling, talent, work, family, passion, goals, life, finances, motherhood, success. But there's only three colors. And that's because you can't juggle flow. You gotta go with the flow. Take it as it comes to you. Rise to the challenges. Give up on dreams, create new ones. Let go of your babies in life and in work. Let each flow inspire the next and allow them to transpire into a whole new flow that you never thought would be your kind of flow. How many times am I going to say flow? As many times am I going to say whole? <laughs> um, so today, blue is my creativity. Uh, it's a, a talent that I have and I used to inspire and entertain. Thank you. <laughs> 
Yellow is time. Uh, we all know as creatives in, in the industry, there's not enough of it in the day. Uh, today is one of these days where it's going to be insane. I'm going to be rushing off from here to go record a podcast for RBS with other startup businesswomen. Um, and then, uh, you know, from there, I have to go and pick up my two kids and, um, and then uh, go project manage the next shop that's opening up in a few days in Brunsfield. Um, and then, you know, by the end of the day, if I have enough, you know, if I have enough energy to open up a bottle of red wine and, and sit on the sofa next to Mark, who I barely have anything left to, no emotions left to share. Um, <laughs> I, you know, try and watch something on Netflix. It just doesn't register. I'm just thinking about bagels. Um, it's, uh, yeah, and the, the pink is, you know, that's, got to get to the pink. The pink was my family. That's, I, I mix them both up. So that the flow is all jumbled up, you know, it's, a, it's, it's all, the pink is my family. And, you know, I wish that um, my girls can be, take up more part of my flow, but sometimes they're not even in my flow and you just have to roll with that. Um, so, so many people ask me how I do it. How do you do it all? And I'm amazed that they think that I do. Um, I didn't plan this bagel empire, but I also know it didn't just happen like that. My life has led me here. The experiences that I've had, the people I've met, the contacts I've made, and they've all allowed me, I've allowed, the way that I've allowed them to lead me into the next thing, giving everything that I've got has brought me here. Ross Bagels would not be what it is if I didn't put everything into it, and I wouldn't be such a good mom if I weren't fueled by the guilt of doing that. <laughs> and here's the thing, I don't have the secret. I'm winging it. And also, there's no such thing as the whole flow. Um, Work-life balance. At no point can you reach a stage of equili equilibrium where you're giving the right amount of time to each thing. Um, because, you know, there's nothing, no, nothing has ever been achieved by a balanced person. Okay? If you want balance in your life, you have to go work for standard life. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a creative entrepreneur, I'm imbalanced, I thrive on my imbalances. The flow that I go with is, is not constant and steady, it's sporadic, it's temperamental, and sometimes overwhelming. And to pretend to you that I, you know, I have this under control would not be, it's, 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 it's a massive disservice to the job that I'm doing. But it's also not as easy as it sounds. Not being stressed about being imbalanced is very stressful. Having a successful business that is expanding quicker than I can control is very stressful. Uh, being the kind of person where everyone expects you to be on all the time is very stressful. And trying to cure a hangover with a very messy chicken parm while driving a branded up Ross Bagels vehicle <laughs> is very stressful. Is that the bagel lady? <laughs> Uh, but I got peeps, you know, I got my support network, um, and they're pretty fucking incredible. Um, you can't manage a flow on your own. You need your peeps. Um, my staff are incredible. If you've ever been to one of my shops, you'll know what I'm talking about. Give it up for the whole fillers. <laughs> my forever friends who have helped me through all the crazy times. Um, uh, you know, they've listened to all those... Uh, horrible hole puns when I'm trying to name the, the bagel specials. Uh, but they've also, you know, had to pay taxi drivers 50 pounds after me getting too excited about a Grace Dent review and yakking all over the taxi. Give it up for Davey Mack. Um, I've got uh, my two baby girls who I love and, uh, and I, of course, I love them. <laughs> Um, but I, you know, it's great that, that they're there because I need, sometimes I'm feeling um, like, you yeah, I'm feeling no love at all, um, or I'm feeling, or when I'm being accused of gentrifying leaf. Um, yeah, so I'm, gen I'm gentrifying leaf with a bagel shop. Uh, Train Spotting 3 is about uh, these guys who are addicted to uh, gluten free pastries. <laughs> um, but the bagel flow, um, the reason why you're all here today. The whole flow, this couldn't be achieved without my flow riders. Um, it's a rap song now. Um, Kim McAllister. 
uh, my, my communications manager. Um, he's one of the comedians I met at the uh, first comedians I met at the Stand Comedy Club, uh, who convinced me to do stand up and who's been helping me write ever since. Uh, he's the mastermind behind our marketing campaigns. And if you missed the reason why Warburton's got Robert De Niro to be in a bagel advert, this is one of our best. Hey, Scotland, Mama Ross here. Now you might have Come on. People don't know you as Mama Ross. They Mama don't know Ross. Me. Maybe they shout at me in the street. That's not for the reasons you think they're shouting at you in the street. Hey, Scotland, Mama Ross here. Now, Scotland, I know you've had some troubles in the past. I I've watched all of Game of Thrones. Come now, this is a really, really important time. I understand it's Brexit. This is coming. I just don't think you should mention Brexit, Lana. I think no, I don't no, understand. Do, do you though? Do you really understand Brexit? The English are trying to stop you from breeding with Europeans so that you can get your sheep back. What's there to understand? Um, have a bagel. It would make everything better. We got Justin Trudeau in charge. You know what happened to him? He ate a bagel. Legalized weed. Don't don't mention Brexit. Don't mention weed. Just sell the bagels. Brexit is like weed. Just because a European can't give you your hole doesn't mean you can't get one. Mama Bros is gonna give you your hole. Esther Clayton. The reason why any bagel shop anywhere has ever sold out of tote bags. The best thing that anyone has ever done with a circle since the invention of a bagel. Our branding is the work of a genius. Um, and Mark Miller. Hermie. my life and business partner, a man who had the good sense to deny the majority of my relentless ideas until he said yes to bagels. <laughs> he has, however, refused the name Papa Bross just to, because he didn't want anyone to think he was like a super fan of the pop group. <laughs> um, if you've ever seen one of our bagels on Instagram and stop what you're doing right away to go and get one, blame Mark Miller. Uh, he is, uh, he is, he does, he is the whole image, um, and I, nothing I can say will be able to justify the art, the craft, and the beauty of this man's photography. So let's just have a quick look while uh, I wrap or something, I don't know. You guys hungry? <laughs> the dirty Rachel. And it was my flow that pulled them all into the whole flow. And together we are the flow riders. <laughs> If there was a take-home message from this talk, then I would ask you all to abandon your Brexit-like thinking to achieve something that is not going to happen and instead just surf the surge, roll with the rise, embrace the storm, and remind yourself daily, I choose to be this. I am unstoppable. Thank you very much.